I can still hear my old hound dog barking because it is indeed Turntable Tuesday with Tom. It is Tuesday. I am Tom. The turntable is in the corner. Got myself a dusty old record today. It sounded a little dusty, a little bit whatever. But hey, uh, we got a special birthday that we're going to mark today. None other than the Fogarty that, of course, uh, was part of Creedence Clearwater Revival. Remember these guys? Creedence Clearwater Revival. Oops, pulled the microphone, shook the camera. There's an earthquake! I always wondered how that worked in a movie. Anyhow, uh, there's really not an earthquake. So uh, I should straighten the camera out a tad, though. With the, the you know in the early days, I just used used to use my hand. It was so much easier. The crew was so much more easy to work with. More easy, easier. I don't know. Whatever the case, uh, Creedence Clearwater Revival. Today we're looking at Creedence Clearwater Revival live from Europe because today is oh no, it's the other Fogarty, Tom Fogarty's birthday. Tom, my personal favorite, as opposed to John. Why? Because uh, his first name's Tom, and so is mine. And, uh, you know, it's interesting. If you ever listen to Tom Fogarty's voice, uh, it, it, some of his solo work and everything like that, Tom sounds a lot like John without the kind of raspiness. So he'd be like, you know, if uh, John Fogarty took a bunch of Ricolas, he would sound like Tom Fogarty, or vice versa. I don't know. I believe Tom was the older of the two brothers. Now, much of what I'm going to discuss today is uh, via a memory, because I've, I've had the, the honor of interviewing... Uh, Creedence Clearwater Revival bassist Stu Cook on a number of occasions, and uh, as well as Doug Cosmo Clifford. So I say that because because uh, I can, because it makes me feel cooler than everybody else. Hey, I interviewed the bass player and the drummer of Creedence Clearwater Revival. I'm one of those guys, like when I'm drinking, you know, I start bragging about all the people that I've interviewed, I'll be like, I have interviewed Aretha Franklin, I am cool. Uh, it's really just phone conversations. It, it's pretty cool, but it's not like it's not like I'm famous or hobnobbing with stars. It's just I get like 20 bucks for doing a newspaper article. Well, it's more than 20, but not much more. That's a whole nother episode. Creed's Clearwater Revival, uh, one of my favorite uh, bands. I've never seen them live because uh, they broke up before I was uh, old enough to go to concerts, 1971 to be exact. Uh, there was an opportunity for them to perform at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame induction ceremony, and there was still some bad blood. And uh, no pun intended, but speaking of bad blood, Tom Fogarty, whose birthday was today, uh, passed away because of a blood transfusion, and he unfortunately uh, contracted AIDS, uh, or an AIDS-related illness. I'm not sure of the, the proper medical term, and I'm not. I, it's certainly nothing to joke about. Uh, so Tom died at, at a young age. And uh, at the time, Tom and John, the two Fogarty brothers who were in the Creed's Clearwater Revival, uh, were not really on the greatest of speaking terms. And it's a kind of a cautionary tale. You know, we know the whole every brother that is in a band. It's like, if you want to destroy the relationship with your brother, best thing to do is get in a band with them. I mean, look at all the brothers that hate each other. We got the Kinks brothers, we got the Oasis brothers, the Everly brothers. Um, I, I don't get it. it it's just uh, whatever, man. You get to a band with your brother, and uh, and it is wasn't that like a whole military thing? Band of brothers, like some. Hey, man, you're my brother. I'll always go to bat for you, unless we get in a band together. Then we're not going to talk anymore. But uh, Tom and Don, you know, the biggest falling out that they had had to do with the uh, control of the Creed's Clearwater revival catalog. Tom, in fact, left the band before the band split up. And astute observers would be looking at this particular record going, why are you showing this record? Tom's not even on it. And that's true, because Creedence was already a three-piece by the time this particular record came out. Uh, the simple reason is I own two Creedence Clearwater Revival records, both of them live ones, both of which I love. Uh, I already did the other one on Turntable Tuesday with Tom. I try not to do repeats, unless for some reason I forgot that I did uh, the first one. Um, but I think a lot of people think that John was, uh, you know, screwed out of a bunch of royalties and things like that. And that may have been partially the case because uh, Creed's Clearwater Revival signed a record deal that uh, certainly benefited the record company more than it did the artists. artists. Uh, John was the primary writer of most of the band's hits over their short career, which was only like four or five years. I know, four or five years? You put out this much great music? Who does that? Green's Clearwater Revival is who. 
Um, but you know, ultimately it came down to the, the record label wanted to start pumping out all these different compilations and live albums and things like that. And uh, John w was more like, hey, uh, dude, these are my children. I wrote the songs. Uh, I should have control. And uh, the rest of the band members said, hey, uh, there's three of us and uh, one of you. And when a vote comes up, um, we're going to vote on the side of compilation records because we want more money. Whatever. Anyhow, uh, the shame is they've never been able to really resolve their differences uh, even as they've moved on into old age, and while people want a Creedence Clearwater Revival reunion, uh, they technically could because all three of the guys on this record are still alive. Unfortunately, Tom, as we mentioned, uh, passed away. Tom, along with every member of Creedence Clearwater Revival, of course, was an important part of the band. You know what? A band is a band. Uh, and sometimes that tension and uh, whatever can translate well musically, as it did with Creedence Clearwater Revival. Uh, but of course, it did want to be in the group's demise as well. Wow, it sounds so serious. I almost sound like a legitimate critic at this point, but I'm not. Uh, I'm actually a legitimate child. My parents were married when I was conceived and uh, indeed born. Uh, I think I may have almost broken them up, but they didn't manage to stay together. Creed's Clearwater Revival, folks. Happy, uh, happy heavenly birthday up in heaven there, Mr. Tom. Thomas Fogarty, and uh, happy Tom Fogarty birthday to all you Creed's Clearwater Revival fans. Hey, I don't pick sides in the Fogarty battle because, you know what, I just love the music. With that being said, thanks for tuning in to, 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 for to, tuning in to Turntable Tuesday with Tom. I'm Tom. It's Tuesday. I'll see you next Tuesday.